Hello and welcome to uh, episode session three of uh, Open Publishing Ecosystem Flex Course that um, that we uh, are so excited about to dig into the next tool here with the next uh, person. So that's that's Paul Hibbets, um, and we're going to be talking about Docsify this. And um, yeah, I'm really excited. So Paul, can can you kind of introduce yourself? Uh, first, and then we'll talk about tools and stuff. Sure. Thanks very much, Taylor, and thanks, Amanda. Um, so uh, my name is Paul Hibbets, and I am a uh, kind of educator slash interaction designer slash kind of more recent open source author um, from Vancouver, Canada, or speaking to you from Vancouver, Canada. And uh, I have gotten into open source more recently and uh, kind of as a way to expand what I could do for my students. I, I teach, I, I've taught a user interface design course for many years at Simon Fraser University in Burnaby. And I kind of got into open source as a way to kind of extend our LMS, which is Canvas, and got into open education in general and open publishing. And so, yeah, so that's a little bit, I guess, about me. Yeah, I'll, uh, that's that's awesome. Thanks for introducing yourself a little bit here. Um, and we wanted to bring you in to talk about um, your work specifically with with Doxify this. And um, you know, up till now, we've we've talked about um, in this this flux course, we've talked a little bit about HedgeDoc, which is mm -hmm. you know a nice tool for authoring markdown files collaboratively. Um, and we've talked about Manifold, which does all kinds of things and is like a whole institutional repository or journal. It is You could use it for those things. Um, Doxify this, I think my favorite thing about it is how different it is in terms of maybe use case, but possibly uh, uh, almost as important technologically. Like it's a, it's a, it's a somewhat self-contained simple tool. Um, and, you know, the baseline of it is for publishing markdown files online, right? But in your like, what what do you think Docsify this is good for, and why should why should one use it or look at it? Sure, I mean, uh, you know, just stepping back a little bit, you know, Docsify this is really about my third open source project, all revolving around markdown publishing. I discovered markdown myself in maybe twenty. Uh, 15, 2016, uh, and I really liked the format as a way to, you know. Um, provide content in a very exchangeable manner. And so uh, first I was using the Grav CMS and I was using that as a way to get markdown content within my LMS again, Canvas to kind of extend the, and improve the student experience really of that. And, uh, you know, it takes about 10 minutes to get like a Grav, you know, a server install going and there's a lot of technical knowledge you have to have. And then I discovered Doctify around uh, 2020 or so. Um, and it's a very unique tool. Doxify allows someone to go from a markdown file to a web page without any build process. It's very unique in that way. Many other tools allow you to go from markdown to web pages with a build process. But Doxify is rare in that it does not require that. So I started working in Doxify and created a couple of starter kits to help other educators and open publishers use that system. And I got that down to about 30 seconds where you could go on GitHub, as long as you had a GitHub account, you could clone or fork a starter kit that I pre-populated with some demo content, set up GitHub pages and get that going. But I still discovered that, you know, even that is a barrier to use for a lot of educators and open publishers. And my goal is not to produce the best markdown publishing system in the world. My goal is to produce the easiest way to get into markdown publishing. And once your needs go beyond Doxify this, hey, there's a world of markdown publishing tools you can move to. And maybe what you want to do is within Doxify this, which is awesome. So Doxify this, the goal is almost instantaneously or within seconds. Mm -hmm. go from a markdown file that's online to a shareable web page that you can embed, that you can visually style, that you can add various elements to, even like enabling hypotheses, using a sidebar, table of contents. So some basic kind of ways to modify that. 
And that's really, you know, a little bit of the, the background story and where we're at and how I see the tool. Again, it's to hopefully uh, the, the, the fastest way out there to get going with Markdown Publishing and then see what you can do with it. I love that. And I think that what I'm hearing you say, and it's just kind of validating what I already like myself about Docsify this, which is that it's very lightweight. It's it's meant, like you're saying, to get people in the door. And if they outgrow it and go into bigger in different areas that are more complex and need more complex resources and, and platforms, then that's kind of like, yay, it did its job um, because it got people comfortable here without being that huge leap that they need to get into to uh, open, open publishing, so. Yeah, exactly, yeah, awesome, yeah. I also like, you know, where you're kind of putting the, I won't call, say, boundaries, maybe setting expectations of what you see the tool as and where you see its uh, best place is in the whole, you know, like the, the least complicated and simplest website to, I don't know, I don't know what the most complicated website is, but I'm sure, there is, there has to be one, right? And so is to say, if you want to do something with Markdown and you want a web page, this has got to be the fastest and easiest way to start, at least that I've seen. Um, and you know, but there, there will be a point where you may want to graduate and say, you know what, I need more than this can do. And we'll, we'll obviously we'll talk, we'll show kind of how the tool works, and we'll probably run into some of those. Uh, hey, can I customize this? Well, you could, you know, kind of situations. But I, I personally, I really like viewing tools in that way because it's so easy to say this thing will do everything. It's like, well, if it does everything, is it that simple to use? Is it complicated? Mm -hmm. I think, I think Doxify really, uh, Doxify this is really great at this one end of the spectrum. Now I'm flipped because the way cameras work, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's on the really easy side. And but you can do a surprising amount with it. You know, like as we'll see here, there's there is quite a bit of customization. Um, one thing I wanted to kind of ask about um, before we kind of move on is you mentioned a build process. Um, so when you're talking about markdown publishing in grav that requires you know like php and hosting for php uh, it doesn't mm -hmm. require a database um and so it's relatively simple to, to get set up but as you said it's not nothing of course mm -hmm. um uh and i i know there are a lot of tools that can take a uh you know you can make a blog with markdown files say and, and lay it out mm -hmm. what do, what do you mean when you say no build process what is um, for a, a, like a non-developer. You know? Well, I guess there's there's two main aspects of that. The biggest aspect is there's no build process to go from Markdown to servable HTML pages. Doxify is unique in that it's a front-end JavaScript processor that goes through and changes in the browser a Markdown file into a responsive web page. So there's no build process that's required to be run by either like a GitHub action or manually or other ways to translate markdown files into HTML files, which are then servable on the web. Yeah. So that's the main thing. But the second really cool thing is, is that the tool itself is also no build. For instance, you can run your own Doxify this instance without needing to build a process to do that. You literally copy the files or fork the instance of Doxify this on the on GitHub, and you can be running your own Doxify this instance with no build process. Cool. So that's also quite powerful because it lowers the entry. Can you imagine getting someone to run or install their own Jekyll instance to do the same thing? It's not trivial. I literally um, have, and it's not <laughs> trivial. Yes. Right. Um, but you can do that with Doxify this. So no build is content, no build process, but even Doxify this itself is cool. no build process. Yeah, and that does greatly expand the flexibility. Like, like you said, you can copy the files and host it literally anywhere that web hosting works, right? GitHub pages will work to host it. Uh, you can throw the files in a reclaim hosting shared cPanel account, shared hosting account, domain of one's own. Um, if if you have a web server, this can serve it basically. Mm -hmm. For sure. Cool. 
All right. Well, so should we dig into the tool? You want to kind of show sure. how it works? That sounds great. great. So uh, why don't we take a look here? And I've got lots of things that we can explore. So uh, you folks can kind of guide me with what you want to see. I'll give you a brief kind of review of what I've got prepared. I've got some materials to give you an overview of Doxify This. I've got some examples that we can look at. Uh, I provide a set of templates to help people get going right away with using Doxify This to present Markdown. And I've also got a little bit about using HedgeDoc with Doxify This uh, and uh, a little background material about Doxify itself that's of interest. So uh, you let me know where you'd like me to kind of start. We can kind of take it from there. Cool. I always like to start, I think, starting with the example, starting with the, mm -hmm. hey, I've got this and let's do this with it. So. If maybe you want to show us, like, we'll grab a markdown file and put it in Doxify this and see what it looks like if we start with that. Sure, sure. So let's start off with just a very simple markdown file. So what I've got here is I've got a markdown file uh, on GitHub. Now, again, as long as your markdown file is accessible somehow on the web, you can use it uh, with Doxify this. Uh, but it has a lot of built-in extra support, if you will, for if you host it on GitHub or Codeberg. And I'll show you that extra support in just a moment. So all you need to do, let's say we've got this markdown file on GitHub, and we want to publish that and make it a shareable web page. We copy the URL of the file. We'll then uh, go back over to our Doxify This app. And right here, this is Doxify This. You can see basically um, it's a... Uh, field that you put a URL to a, of a markdown file in. So I'll do that. So I just pasted that. And then we have a button called publish a standalone web page. I can tap that. And here we go. We have a responsive web page, uh, also including a mermaid diagram, which talks by the supports, also supporting uh, LaTeX, which is mathematical notation. So these are things that are fairly standard in markdown to be supported these days, like with GitHub, let's say, and Codeberg. And they're also supported in Doxify this. Um, but you know, so we got a web page, but you know, what could we do with it? Well, for instance, we can add a table of contents on the right hand side, and I'll regenerate the page. And now you see a little table of contents on the right hand side. I can tap on one of those items and I'll scroll to that link, uh, that area of the page. I can go back to my uh, Doxify this web page builder, and I can choose a standard Doxify sidebar a little bit more substantial navigational tool that supports multiple headers and things like that that you could do. And lastly, uh, I mentioned like extra support for GitHub and Coburg. Well, what do I mean? So you have this little uh, checkbox and that will automatically include an edit this page link. So let's say you wanna go beyond just presenting Markdown. Let's say you wanna make it so you invite collaboration with others in your GitHub or Coburg repository of your content. You can check mark that option, build your standalone page. And then if you scroll down, for instance, you'll see an edit this page link, tap on that link, and you'll go directly to the markdown file on GitHub, where you could then fork and make an edit and suggest changes and things like that. So that is really a quick tour of the tool. Uh, one thing I should highlight is that when you generate a, a page, what's actually happening is a URL is created. And this URL, we can talk more about it later if you want, but basically this URL says to Doxify this, hey, render this markdown file, and you give it the, 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 the path to the file and the file name, and then it can pass options, like here you see including the sidebar, sidebar equals true. So Doxify this is again quite unique in that there's two interfaces to style your web pages. One interface is the point and click interface, the web page builder. You could just use that. Never think about URLs, just you know, use the web page builder, copy and paste the final URL. But interestingly, the URL itself is also a way to modify a web page. So let's say I wanted to change from a sidebar presentation to a table of contents. I could put table of contents equals true, refresh the page, and now you can see that. So the value of this approach is that every time you include that URL, maybe in like an iframe, you can change the presentation of the content to perfectly match the destination platform. 
creating a uh, standalone site with Doxify This. Again, you can set up those uh, parameters or the, with the web page builder to style the page that's best suited for that. So that's something that, that's always, uh, I think, valuable to highlight to folks about these two ways to style pages. Yeah, and that's it's it's so cool. Um, you know, when 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 the three of us actually were talking kind of about you know this course a little bit before while we were kind of saying, hey, would you be able to help us out, uh, Paul? We were kind of talking about the power of understanding what a URL is and what it can do, mm -hmm. and I just love the idea. I guess I guess this isn't really completely unique to Doxify this, but it is. If you know, if if uh, if will allow me to be really nerdy and excited about the tech specifically here for a second, and not just what it can do, it's the the entirety. You know, all of the options are saved in the URL, right? Like all of that configuration yeah. is there, which is um, fascinating, honestly, to me. Like um, that that is even possible to do, I guess. But the advantage being is, you know. Like you were saying before, there's no build process for for any of this. That's in part because we can tell the browser what we want it to do based on the URL that you've set up and based on the the tool, the, the how it's interpreting that. But um, so, I guess some 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 kind of maybe silly questions. Um, for, so you've you've got uh, something published in this way. This is a file, a URL you can share with anyone, right? Like it's our, it's public, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, what else? Where where else can you go with that? Like, I mean, what what is it? What what kind of where from there? I know you've done work with Canvas and things like that. What do you like to do with these docs by this URLs? Sure, sure. So uh, yeah, that that's a great segue to looking at some more uh, examples. Um, and so again, because of the way that you can style your content at the level of the URL. It means that any tool that accepts a URL, you can include Doxify this content and you can style it. So let's take a look at what that might look like. You, you mentioned Canvas. I mean, definitely a lot of the roots of this tool come from my goal of wanting to extend and improve the student experience within an LMS like Canvas. So let's quickly take a look at that. Um, let's look at this first to kind of set the stage. What is this? This is actually an entire website created with Doxify This. Uh, because with Doxify This, you can utilize all the features that Doxify comes with, like adding a top-level nav bar, adding a, a very interactive uh, left-handed sidebar. Um, and by pointing Doxify This to a collection of markdown files, you can build an entire website. So I'm just going to quickly kind of go through this. You know, we have a schedule page. We have a topics page. I can click on one of these topics and go to one of the internal um, uh, weekly materials pages uh, where I'm using iframes and content from various places to include. So this is really a standalone website using Doxify This. But we were talking about Canvas, weren't we? Well, this is the thing. You can reuse the exact same content in different contexts. So while this is a website, this is a Canvas course. And this Canvas course uses Doxify This to include the same content. So looking at the homepage, I'm hoping you see, oh, that, that looks familiar. We, we were just looking at something like that. Indeed, that is true. If we go to the schedule page, this is indeed the same content. But because of URL magic and things like that, um, I can set the font to match the standard Canvas font. I can set the link color to match the link color of my canvas install to make it look like for the students, in fact, they don't know any of this, right? It's just like, uh, hopefully they think this is a great canvas site. <laughs> and you know what? That would be the greatest compliment for me to hear um, because they don't need to know anything about Docs by this. But if we go to a page like resources and we scroll down, you can do things like this. You could include, if you want your students and they're technically comfortable, with something like GitHub, and my computing science students are, for instance, you can even include a link to go to the repository page with that content. So now you see we're serving GitHub-based content seamlessly within Canvas, and all the instructor needs to do, it's, it's not nothing, but all they need to do is they need to include an iframe or a URL of Doxify this. 
So yes, it is an extra step, but there's no easier way really to include external content uh, than the markdown based content anyway, than as I've just described with Doxify there. So that's an example of using uh, Canvas with Doxify this. Uh, another, uh, would you like me to show another example, Taylor, or pause there? <laughs> Uh, I don't know, Amanda, if you have anything right now um, before no, we move I, on. I was, I was going to kind of ask, like, how, how simple would this be? How straightforward would it be for an instructor to route this through their Canvas or their LMS? But like you're saying, it's really in an iframe type situation, mm -hmm. which is as simple as it probably can get. And I, I just think it's so cool. One of the things that I really like here, specifically with, with the example of using it in an LMS, is this came up a lot for me when I was working in higher ed and, and also doing domain of one's own stuff. And we had faculty who were like, hey, I want to publish this part or all of my course content in the open. But also, mm -hmm. I get feedback from students that says, I'm confused by where the course lives on the internet. Basically, they didn't ask it in that way. That's a really tailored way of framing that question, but but it's or a thing. But to say like, you know, I don't know where to go for my course stuff. There's some things in Moodle. There's some things over here. The syllabus is over here. And my advice at the time was like, well, you know, use link to everything from Moodle, right? Like have even if you have nothing else there, have a link to your course website and your syllabus and important stuff there. So that people, so it's your students have a, a, a place to do it. This allows a really easy way to go one whole step further, which is you could literally have it in both formats in both places if you wanted it to, right? Like you could, yeah. you could author it in Markdown, embed it directly wherever you want your students to to be, um, and then also embed it, you know, on a a website to say like, hey, this is my course on this if anyone wants to look at it. And of course, it's on GitHub, so you can now fork it too, right? So um, I think it's even, it, it just kind of, uh, in a really natural way, I think, lends itself to that kind of use of reuse and really seamless updating too. That's another one where it's like, mm -hmm. okay, what if I want the same thing in two places uh, and I need to update it? Well, if it's embedded from one place, problem solved. Mm -hmm, mm hmm. Yes, for sure. And, and also looping back to Amanda's uh, comment, um, you know, what the instructor is doing to do that is, you know, using an iframe, that's one way, but also a lot of the LMSs now like Moodle and Canvas, they have something called like an external link tool, where you can actually for one of your items in the main LMS nav area, like in Canvas is on the, the the left hand side, uh, you can actually include a URL for a menu item and that will automatically be embedded. So it's even a little bit easier than an iframe because an iframe is still, you know, HTML tags and stuff like that. Um, but both Moodle and Canvas, and I can't speak to other LMSs, they often just have like a tool where you just enter the URL and it will actually provide, you know, the functionality of that iframe for you, which, which is even better. Cool. Um, and then uh, to your uh, comment there, Taylor, uh, indeed, uh, using Doxify this allows you to display in different ways the same content in different locations. Um, and at the same time, providing you with a, a much faster uh, publishing experience. Like to edit a web page in Moodle or Canvas, it's not a, a fast process usually. Usually there's multiple steps you need to go to. And depending on how comfortable the, the instructor or the publisher is with something like uh, GitHub and being able to like sync their content to their desktop, you can actually start editing all your course content on your desktop by spending a, a minute or two kind of setting that process up. A little bit beyond probably what we're talking about today, but it, it's all possible. Um, I actually like to show you another example uh, of, of this idea of using content in different ways in different locations. Um, I'd like to see if we can look at an open source project by uh, Alan Levine called True Writer. And True Writer is a, um, it's like a WordPress theme that is really set up for uh, helping uh, students uh, use WordPress as a publishing tool. Um, and you can see here, this is uh, Alan's, or he goes by the nickname Cogdog, of course. Um, 
documentation on GitHub. Now, Alan was interested in having that documentation available in WordPress. And what he was doing previously was he was manually kind of taking this chunk of content and reformatting the content so it's presentable in WordPress. But that's a manual process, right? Um, but now Alan is using Doxify This, where he's taking that same documentation, and hopefully this is going to work, uh, and uh, uh, using Doxify This to display that content within WordPress admin. So here we have the True Writer Options page, and Alan has added this tag called Documentation, uh, the tab, and tapping on this presents his documentation. And this is the same README file from that GitHub repository, but it's using Doxify This to present that content <clears throat> and to match that content within WordPress. So that's another, <clears throat> pardon me, that's another great example of using the Doxify This to repurpose, represent the same content in multiple contexts. And that, I think that's a brilliant example, especially if anyone, this won't be the most relatable example in terms of what I'm, how I'm going to describe it, but here we go. Like if, if before he wanted to have documentation in a tab like that as part of his theme, and he wanted to update the documentation. The only way for people to see it would be for them to update the theme. Like that, he would have to make the change in his theme and then update the theme, or people would have to update the theme, and then they would see the latest set of documentation. And this A completely eliminates the need for him to manually, you know, ship text around. But B, you know, he could even do things like if if there was a particularly frequently asked question. And it didn't require like a fix or anything to the theme. You could just throw that near the top and say, hey, I get this question a lot and here's how to deal with it. And he doesn't have to worry about like, oh, the only people who see my new message is the people who've updated to the latest version or whatever, you know. Yep. Yep. It, it's it's very true. It allows it it lowers the barrier of of updating and making content the most uh well recent, right? As you describe, uh, because it's seamless. It just will be there for the next time they view the same content. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I think that that's probably, you know, a good second example uh, of, of, of reusing content in different places. Again, all using uh, Doxify this. Awesome. So uh, what do you what do you want to cover next? What do you think makes the most sense? For Amanda or for me? <laughs> oh, I, sorry, for, for you, Paul. I mean, what? what oh, uh, oh, okay. The next? Uh, let's see. Um, maybe we should talk a little bit about. Actually, let's go back and look at what we can do to help people get going with Docs by this. How does that sound? Sure. Okay. Um, so, of course, we know that Docs by this uses Markdown, and again. If you want to use Markdown and you find value in using Markdown, then then this tool is, is something that could help you further that, right? Um, but you know, it can still be kind of daunting uh, to to kind of get an idea first of all what Docsify this can do with Markdown, and also getting going with Markdown. You know, maybe a, a blank document might not be the best thing for some people. Maybe it's having some example content and kind of rework it into their own thing. So uh, the idea here is that with Doxify This, in addition to the app itself, there are various templates that uh, can be forked or cloned or downloaded and uploaded or however you want to call it um, to help people get going. So for instance, let's take a look at this little template. This is a one page uh, template that shows lots of examples of like images and content and different ways that Markdown can be used to mark up that content and stylize it. And so basically, as long as you copy or clone or fork uh, this repository and, and then having this file, uh, you can then start it to be kind of like your own starter point, if you will, uh, for your own docs by this uh, work. So. For instance, what we can do is we can literally, we'll just take that URL uh, and we'll uh, open up Doxify this to get, whoop. 
I'll open Doctify this here. And you can see here that this is, uh, it's a pretty long document, but it just gives someone a, a good example of all the formatting and styling they can do with Markdown. And again, we can go back to Doxify this, we can add a sidebar, and then we get to navigation. Oh, this is a good point here. It's a very long document, right? There's actually a lot of header level twos and threes to kind of make navigating this long document easier. But you notice that the sidebar right now is only showing header one and header twos. We can go back to our Doxify this interface, show more page appearance options, and set a higher number to be included in headers in your sidebar. So I just put that to three. I'll republish the page. And now you can see, oh, okay, so under introduction, now I've got this nice kind of list of these subtopics, if you will, and I can more quickly navigate. So again, this is just a sample to help someone get going. Uh, it's pretty generic, and it uses the content to kind of, at the same time, show people what they can do with um, Markdown. But of course, uh, we have some other templates available. Uh, another popular one would be the uh, one-page site template. This is actually on Codeberg. So Codeberg is an open source alternative to GitHub. Um, some people no, might not be comfortable, let's say, with putting their content on GitHub, perhaps. Codeberg is open source uh, and uh, has for some people, a more welcoming kind of uh, area to share their content. Doxify This works totally with Codeberg files too. This is a one-page course template. So in other words, the idea of this one page, you could provide the materials for you know, a, a short four-week course or 12, 13-week course um, to your students. Um, we'll copy that URL. We'll go over to our Doxify This um, uh, oops, go over to our Docs by this instance. We'll paste that URL, publish as a standalone web page. Here's my one page course uh, template, but you know what would really help here is adding a little table of contents on the side there. Here we go, perfect. So now we see what's happening this week. We have our, each week we can navigate down to, we have a schedule, a collection of resources, LMS, LMS link, and contact. All on just one page, responsive, mobile friendly uh, markdown file uh, presented by Doxify This. I so think that's, what's that's really plan. cool about this is um, like you, you showing how to get started with Doxify This is that you keep it so simple up front, um, but people can choose more complexity and, and they, they have the option to. Um, like you're saying, um, expand the number of headers, uh, heading levels that they might want to show on the sidebar. Um, but they don't, they're not confronted with all, all of this at once. They can simply just get this up mm -hmm. onto a page. Um, and then if they, if they need more, they can choose to kind of go down that route. And then what I also love about this kind of going back to Taylor's point much earlier about how great this is for, showing people how URLs work is that it also provides people with really clear um, examples and reasons why uh, things like working with proper headings <laughs> is important. So people are kind of learning through each step, right? It's like, oh, like they're learning good digital practice by using a tool like this. And I think that that is one of the more valuable things about um, such a, a cool, simple, and flexible tool like this. Uh, that's great. That's great to hear. And, and you're absolutely right. You know, if you're using, uh, you know, semantic formatting for your markdown files, right, using header ones, twos, threes to help structure your document, then that will benefit uh, every viewer of that file using Doxify This. And as you notice, you can change the levels of content or levels of headers and your table of contents or your sidebar as well. Uh, so it kind of makes it so you can present the most usable, navigatable version of that markdown file based on you know your own preferences and the, and the content that you're using, for sure. Uh, OK, maybe one more example, a template. Uh, we can do something more complicated. Um, for instance, this is uh, a multiple 
uh, page site template, which is basically like mimicking like a, like a four or five page website. Um, so we can look at this through Doxify this, and basically you can have a big banner image, and there's actually CSS classes that are documented with the Doxify this web app, that if you wanna go to the next level and you wanna include classes in your markdown markup, you can do that. You can even create your own classes. So again, it's, it's surprising how far you could take this simple tool, but this is an example of a multiple page site with just a big banner image up top, uh, multiple topics. We can click on one of those topics and go to that page. Uh, we can go back home and you can see here, if I go to topic three, I have this edit this page link, I can click on it. And yes, you guessed it, we'll go to that file. Um, so that is uh, another example template. I'm just gonna close up a few tabs here, if you don't mind. So I'll just keep things nice and clean here. And um, our my last example would be probably the most complex. This is a multiple page course site. So this is the style that you saw maybe about five, 10 minutes ago when you were looking at Canvas. Um, looking at this, repository just for a moment you'll notice some things you'll notice for instance each module has its own markdown page you'll notice that there's also a file for your sidebar your nav bar even a footer um, these are these are not uh, how can I these are elements of doxify itself so doxify this doesn't try to reinvent the wheel doxify this leverages everything it can with doxify itself uh, so this is all documented on the Doxify site, uh, and I have pointers to it, of course, on my site. Um, of you know, for instance, opening up a sidebar file, uh, it basically is a list of the pages that you want to include in your sidebar. So it's not overly complicated, and you can include also fave icons or or icons in that. Um, but you know, this is a little bit more advanced, definitely. That's true. Um, however, to create a multiple paged site for a course uh, that only consists of a collection of markdown files is itself a simplification. Um, and then by Doxify this, I simply point to the home page of that site, and here it is. Everything comes together. I have my nav bar, my topics page, my resources page, my UX guide page, contact page. Then I can look at each week, jump into uh, the materials that I want to for that particular week. And then I have all my links to the LMS. So this is a completely contained, self-contained website built by nothing more than a collection of markdown files. And Doxify this through Doxify does all the heavy lifting. So that's probably the, a good a good spot to stop the looking at the templates because that's that's a pretty complex if you understand what I'm trying to say, it's it's still very simple in that it's a collection of basic markdown files. However, you know, there's more files involved for sure, but also you create a complete and entire standalone site through that uh, template. That's uh, and I, uh, it's it's amazing what is possible there. And and again, I'll just go back to like all of the structure of that. You know, is either present, as you said, in the markdown files themselves or the URL telling the browser where the markdown file lives that it should look at, right? Mm -hmm. um, one question I have, <clears throat> so I will say like, if someone's looking at this stuff and it's like, ooh, I wanna make, you know, maybe they played around with uh, making a couple of things, just basic things in Docs by this. And they say, cool, I wanna try to make one of the more complicated ones. Um, I know that they'll find that, okay, there isn't a field for literally every single option, right? Because that would be, you would have, I mean, uh, a web page with hundreds of <laughs> um, <clears throat> possible options on it. And on docsfythis.net itself, you do list out, um, you know, hey, this option can be included by putting it in the URL, this advanced option. Mm -hmm. um, for the case of a multiple, uh, for for your one of your more complicated uh, templates, how would you suggest people go about making that? Should they just copy the template and start editing it, or I, I mean, I, maybe maybe my question isn't a, a great one, but I'm just trying to think of where would someone get started 
once they've looked at the basics and they want to say, okay, I want to see if I can make something more complicated. How do you suggest people do that? I think your your suggestion of, of using the template and cloning or forking it is, you know, it, it's probably the fastest way to go, uh, particularly if you're looking at like a multiple page kind of mm -hmm. scenario. Single page, very straightforward. I, I mean, really, I include examples, but you could use really any markdown file, right? Yeah. It's once you start getting into multiple pages and you want to include things like a, a custom sidebar um, or a nav bar, yeah, you're right. Then it makes it makes most sense to to kind of um, copy or clone uh, that template as a, as a starting point. Um, but let's go back and 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 one thing to to kind of show you too is that with uh, on the Doxify this home page, um, there's a lot of stuff. Like intentionally, when you first get to this page, it looks like easy breezy. Uh, I got a field. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. I can paste a markdown file on that. And I got like a few options. Um, and then there's like scrolling down, it's like all about Doxify this. And this is actually the documentation of the um, the app. And as you were uh, asking about, there's a section of ready to use markdown templates. So on this section, they can see like a little preview of these templates you'll notice that maybe some of these are now a bit familiar to you because we've gone through a couple of them right um and there's links to for instance they can go to the uh github repo that contains the files they could fork them if they want or, or copy them or clone them um but there's also all of these um links uh which will take them to actual URLs to show what you can do. So for the multiple page course site, you wanna do like a, a standalone course site with even a search function. So you could tap on that link and you can see that not only now do we have uh, that multiple page course site, but we have a search function now where we could actually type in something and find content. Uh, so this is really the next level of, you know, you can even add more functionality far beyond uh, the stylization of content, but adding extra functionality. And if we go to that URL, we can see here that uh, we've got uh, a, a URL parameter search equals true. That does all the magic, by the way. And then Doxify this knows, oh, okay, you want me to index these files and include a search box. Um, but uh, the original question that you asked was you know how would you you get going so you know again you could start with the template you can also explore the different example urls to see that but there's one more thing i should show you let's go to that template and uh let's go to the we've got to find the, the home page that's the markdown file we want okay i'm going to copy that markdown file and then i'm going to open up my docs by this instance um, as you mentioned, uh, there is uh, uh, an option to show some more additional appearance options, okay? So this allows you to like set a title tab, allows you to change your font family, link color, header levels. So the intention here is to get, okay, you want some stylization. What are the most common and important stylization mm, options? And based on my learning of my audience and also my own needs, um, you know, this set is supposed to be kind of like that bucket, okay? So like this bucket hopefully will enable you to, for instance, to repurpose content in like a WordPress theme even, or repurpose content in your Canvas LMS. Um, but if you wanna make a multiple page site with a custom sidebar, you know, that, that that's a little bit more complicated. I don't know if you know this, Taylor, maybe you do, but you can actually access that in the web page builder as well. You don't need to go into the land of your parameters if you don't want to. Uh, more recently, I have introduced what is called an advanced mode of the web page builder. Little experimental, but I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, basically, there's a list of all the URL parameters that come with the default page builder. And these are all described here for you. And if you scroll down, there is a second list uh, that is also included that's, they're valuable, but they're not as commonly used. But they're available in what's called the Advanced Web Page Builder. Oh, hmm, what's that? Let's tap on that. This will reveal the advanced mode of Doxify This. This is now everything 
that is possible with Doxify there. And do you know how that mode is set? That mode is set by, yes, you guessed it, a URL parameter. Now, it's not the most obvious thing, it's true, but allows for something very powerful to happen. And that is, if you have a group of educators or publishers who are getting going with Doxify This, and you need to provide some more advanced capabilities, you can share and, and distribute a URL to then allow others to also advance, you know, access this functionality. Um, so again, this is, it's not experimental as in it's buggy, it, it works really well. It's experimental as in I've decided to at this point only have it as a URL parameter, which also means, guess what you can do? You can bookmark this. You can bookmark this and then with one tap, you can bring up the advanced mode. So again, there's lots of interesting advantages of doing it by a URL parameter. But I want to show you that now we could paste in that advanced or multiple course page site, right? And we can scroll down. I'm just gonna get that disappeared. And we could say load a custom sidebar, load a custom nav bar, cross our fingers, tap publish a standalone web page, and ba boom. Here we go. So That's without awesome. using anything manually, you can do that. Uh, but it gets even better uh, because if you have a group of people, again, like I say, the scenario for myself is to help other publishers and educators use this tool, you can even do something like this, where you can look at a published uh, Doxify this URL, copy, the parameters that you use to configure this particular setup, go back to your Doxify this URL and add those parameters and reload the page. And now you've got a URL where, look, the sidebar is automatically selected. Scroll down here. Look, sidebar, custom, and navbar automatically selected. So this is actually a URL to pre-configure the Docs Divide This web app to help others get going even faster because you can show them and pre-configure it. It's almost like you can help them at the keyboard level and configure what they need. So now if I press this publish button, here's the site. Oh, oh you know what happened? I need to recopy the uh, URL of the... Uh, it's not a demo, right? Unless something hiccups. Yeah. Um, I need it's to, a real demo now. Yeah, it's a real demo. So I, I, I had to repaste the URL. So I've done that. And here we go. And there you are. Cool. Yeah, so you can template your templates you, <laughs> in some ways. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you, you can, you can pre-configure even the docs by this interface by URL parameter. You don't have to. You sure. don't ever have to know any of that. But it's an example, again, of how scalable the tool can go in terms of not just publishing, but to help other people get publishing even faster. Remember? Because that was one of our goals, wasn't it? To help people get into Markdown Publishing as fast mm -hmm. as possible. And that also can involve even configuring the tool, right? To help For you sure. do that. Especially, you know, some of the folks who may see this may be interested in the first level of, okay, I have a thing I want to publish it. I think a lot of folks who will encounter this are in the, in the uh, situation where they're helping someone else mm -hmm. work through something, maybe with their students or another group of people. It's like, okay, I need a tool that can do this. So having this sort of one layer back customization of Doxify this itself invaluable for that i think so that's that's really cool to see it's that easy to do they don't have to necessarily like you know hack up your html let you they don't have to take your thing and fork it and make a bunch of changes to how it works to do to, to make it fit their own needs really simply so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah for sure cool um I mean, we've got, you know, we, we have, uh, we've been recording for about uh, 50 minutes, just about. Um, but uh, is there anything else you want to cover? One thing I'd like to, to show um, that is how folks could um, potentially host their own Docsify this instance, and I guess why they would want to. Um, but is there anything else you want to get into? 
Well, uh, how would you feel as a segue to that if I showed a little bit about Docs by this with HedgeDoc, or is that sure. something you would like to do? No, that that makes perfect sense. Okay, so uh, and of course, hat tip to you, Taylor, for discovering that with HedgeDoc, uh, uh, with HedgeDoc, you can actually access the URL to the raw markdown file. So, um, you know, that, that was something that was new to me. And once you had discovered that and shared it, uh, there's a lot of cool things you can do. Um, and I know you've, you've done a session with HedgeDoc, so I'm, I'm not gonna rework that. Um, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to show a sample of what you can do with combining Docs of this with HedgeDoc. Um, and so how does that sound? That's a little Sounds bit. great. Okay, so let's take a look at um, a HedgeDoc uh, file. And so this is a HedgeDoc file. Uh, I won't go into any details, but HedgeDoc is a great way to collaboratively or on your own edit markdown files online. And it has this really nice presentation mode, at least I like this mode, where you can edit and see your raw markdown file on the left-hand side and a preview on the right. Um, and you can invite others to edit this content and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's great. Um, so uh, the thing is, is that, okay, you've got this content in HedgeDoc. Hmm, uh, wouldn't it be nice to be able to present that content in different ways and maybe leverage something like Docs by this to do that? So indeed, that is possible um, by, uh, as you're going to describe in a little while, Taylor, you 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 do need your own instance of Docs by this to do this. It's because basically with HedgeDoc, HedgeDoc needs to have the presence of being on a server. And uh, so every HedgeDoc instance is on a particular server. Docs by this doesn't know that unless you tell it. Um, so currently uh, what you need to do in order to combine HedgeDoc with Docs by this is to create your own instance of Docs by this and in the HTML, in the index HTML file, just include the URL of your HedgeDoc instance. So anyway, that's not something that maybe you'll you'll be talking about a bit later, but that's basically what I've already done for the demo hedgedoc.org instance. So hopefully this will work. I'll take this URL of my HedgeDoc document. I'll go back over to my own HedgeDoc instance. I'll paste this URL in. And I'll publish this down on web page. And by golly, am I happy? It worked. <laughs> um, and so here is the HedgeDoc document. And you got it. We can do things like add a table of content. Uh, we can do things like add a Docsify sidebar. Uh, we can even do things like include. And you can tweak the text of this edit, this link. But for now, I'm just going to check mark it. And so that'll actually take someone back to the HedgeDoc instance of the file. So now you've got this nice two-way street, don't you? Where you can present your content in HedgeDoc, but also in your web page, provide a link to go back to the HedgeDoc document. Um, so now that we've seen that, why don't we close a few windows? Just quickly take a look at, you know that, remember that one-page course uh, template? Let's go there, one-page course template. This is that one-page course template uh, in HedgeDoc. I'm going to take that URL and I'm going to go and uh, paste that into my oh, paste that into my HedgeDoc instance here, and I'm going to add a table of contents. But this is what I want to show you: is that now I'm in HedgeDoc. If I make a edit in HedgeDoc. As soon as I make that edit, and by the way, of course, there's version tracking in HedgeDoc, that content is updated. You can see it here in my preview. And to get that published with Docs by this, or that update, you don't have to do anything. I mean, it's done because Docs by this has the URL to your HedgeDoc file. All I need to do is refresh the page. And you can see here, that's been added. So it really does provide a very fluid and fast way to now partner a collaborative, version-controlled, very user-friendly editing environment with HedgeDoc using Docsify This to then publish out, share, stylize, right? Because now 
you see here with Hedgehog, you know, blue links, let's say. Um, if we go back to our, our instance, I hope I'm using the right one. Um, I can change, let's say, my link color to red and go to there. And you can see, well, pinky red. And you can see that, oh, yeah, we can now stylize and change that content presentation, but not change the style of the Hedgehog document. Um, so I hope that was a good little demo of how you can combine Hedgedoc with Docsify this. Uh, what do you think so far? I think, yeah, I think that's really, it's a beautiful marriage of two very um, simple tools, right? Well, in, in, in that, I think they're both relatively easy to get to terms with how to use them. Um, and yeah, I love the idea of simply editing you know a file and refreshing it over here and it's it's completely live instantly it's i think uh a really powerful option right and and obviously you could you know for instance if you didn't involve hedge doc and you say had your markdown files in github you know github has an editor on the website and it works pretty well it's a nice editing interface but it's not um truly collaborative the way Hedgedoc is, where multiple people can be writing at the same time, like a Google Doc. Um, yeah. And I actually think Hedgedoc is possibly simpler to use, if you, especially if you're new to Markdown. Um, Hedgedoc, because of the way that it previews things and the, the toolbar, I think it's it's pretty simple to use. Maybe actually GitHub just updated their editor, so it's it's pretty good too. But, mm -hmm. um, but the nice thing is Hedgedoc is also self-hostable too, so you can, mm -hmm. you can be completely hosting it on your own or or in like Reclaim Cloud or whatever service, it can live wherever you need it to, so. Yeah, cool. for sure. I think those two tools, I mean, work together. And again, kudos to you for discovering the slash download uh, option with Hedgehog because that all of a sudden, if, as soon as you can access, and this goes for any tool, right? Like whatever editor you want to use or editing your online platform, et cetera, as long as you can access your raw, markdown source you can then bring that into docsify this well you're not really bring it in but anyway you point <laughs> to it from docsify this and then you can present it uh you awesome. know which, which is, is, is really expands the possibilities of reusing that content awesome so um should i demo how to set up your own instance on reclaim hosting um, i think that'd be awesome great great so i'll do that i totally forgot to Share my screen since my internet kicked me out. Um, let me so let me do that. Um, so uh, here we go. Okay, so um, I, we're gonna do kind of the similar thing to what you demoed in in some ways because I think I do think one of the main reasons why you would want to host your own Docsify this instance I, I can think of two basic reasons. A, you want it to live on your domain name, which is I think valuable, right? Like if you want to have this at a nice branded domain and it's if especially if you're linking directly to it and not embedding docsify this somewhere that mm -hmm. could be really valuable and um we'll sh we'll go through it when we upload a copy to the server here but there's more options other than just hedge doc like um that you've included in that too that you could lock down for say what urls are allowed and things like that mm -hmm. um this is our document that we're going to try and show um, that, you know, that we uh, have been kind of using throughout this course here, this what is the web um, uh, page here that is already in a Docsify, sorry, a Hedgedoc instance. I get I get mix, mixed up because the subdomain we chose for this is docs.reclaimed.tech, but that's just a coincidence. <laughs> um, and uh, so if I go to docsifythis.net um, and Paul, you've already mentioned this. Docsify this, this page we're looking at right now is just some files, basically. So we can basically mm -hmm. download this and host it almost anywhere. So right from here, if I go to the GitHub, if you're really comfortable with Git or GitHub, there are all kinds of more advanced options that would let you do things like you could fork uh, Paul's repository here and set up like a GitHub action to deploy it to your hosting if you wanted to, or you could use... GitHub pages and map a domain name to that, or you could use um, you could use the command line to clone it down. Like there, there are many ways, but I wanted to kind of just show here, like what's the most simple way if you just want to download a zip file and put it someplace. 
Um, so from the Docsify this uh, repository, I can literally just hit the code here and download zip, or I can go to the releases. Either should work, um, I imagine. Technically, I usually recommend folks download a release because this is Paul going and saying, here we go. This is the latest known good version. Is that what you'd recommend, or do you normally just have people download the zip file? Uh, I think either one uh, would be good. Uh, okay. Usually, you know, I, I always make sure that whatever is the in process at production Docsify this is working without any issues. Okay. But a little bit of extra safety would be downloading a release, as you highlighted. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm gonna just grab the zip. That's what I've been doing when you know sure. deploying this recently. Um, but I always like to ask because you know different uh, different people have different practices for how they kind of use Git. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, so I've got that zip file. I'm going to go over to a cPanel account we have here. This is our reclaimed.tech cPanel. I'm already logged in, of course. I've also already made a subdomain that I'm going to put this on. This wouldn't have to be at a subdomain. It could live at a lot of places, but um, I'm going to make a subdomain, or I wanted a subdomain called doxify.reclaimed.tech. That's what we're going to go with. So I made that. That's pretty easy to do, um, but I made that ahead of time. I'm now going to go to the document route for that, or I could just go in the file manager, but I'm here, so I'm going to just click on that. This is this is the folder where the files for this subdomain exist, and all I really need to do is now upload that zip file, extract it, and move some files around, and I'll have my own copy. So I'm going to hit upload here and select file, and the way I'm sharing this, you can't see it, but I'm just selecting the Docsify this zip file that I just downloaded. Great, so now I'll go back, and uh, I can just reload this here. And now I can extract this zip file, and that's fine. And so it will have extracted it into its own folder, and so now we just need to move some files within this docs folder. So if, if I go to docsify this main, and then this is kind of uh, so, somewhat meta information about the repository is basically uh, what I would call it. Um, but this docs folder, this is the website itself, basically. This is all that you need. So um, technically, not every one of these files is completely necessary, but it's really easy and not going to hurt anything. Just select all the files in this docs folder. Um, and we're going to move them. And the way this, this um, you know, if you're using like an FTP client, you could you could do it that way too. But I kind of wanted to do this right from cPanel because I think a lot of folks who use our hosting are going to do it this way. Um, if I select all those files and hit move like I just did, it's going to say, great, where would you like to move them to? And I just need to clip off these last two folders here so that it goes right to the folder for my subdomain, move. And that's it. Now, if I go back up two levels, I can really just delete this this docs by this main folder and the zip file because I don't need those anymore. And now I have my own copy of Docsify running at docsify.reclaimed.tech. There we go. So this is exactly the same as what is at docsify this dot net right now. So um, well, in theory, I mean, maybe you have customizations, but I think it's exactly the same. From here, I can now edit this index.html file to do more with it and customize it a little bit. So if I hit this edit button in the file manager, there's a lot of stuff in here. This is the entire page, including all of the, the magic that's converting Markdown it is called from here in certain ways, right? But um, if you scroll down, to I believe it starts yeah right here at about line 106. Um, there's some configurable options, and we won't go through all of these, um, but you can do things like uh, you know cust customize specific default things. Uh, have okay yeah set dark mode dark mode to permanently be enabled things like that. Um, what I'm going to do, I think, focus on just for the moment is these two options here. Allowed domains is really interesting. So you can say set allowed domains to continue single or multiple comma separated domain names to control which domains can be used for hosting. 
What this would let you do is say, oh, our Doxify this instance can only work hosting markdown files from these web domains, uh, which could be really nice if you have something that's maybe a little bit more official and you're worried about people like using your Doxify this on your domain to link to something you know that it doesn't belong to you, but belongs to them. Um, the other one is this HedgeDoc instances. This will enable HedgeDoc support if we tell it about our HedgeDoc server, basically. In our case, if I go to my file over here, our hedge doc lives at docs.reclaimed.tech. So I'm going to copy that, go back to my index file here, paste that in, and save it. And now if I go back over to, oh, that's the wrong one. If I go back to my Doxify instance and refresh, won't really, nothing will have changed just yet. But I can go and copy this hedge doc file. And um, I think I may have to trim this off, but we'll, we'll try it here. Um, I should be able to publish it, but oh, you know what? I, I think I actually have to refresh here. Um, nope. Okay. Whoops. So the last thing I have to do is just get rid of this final part of the URL parameter here because I the way I grabbed this, I didn't actually grab a publicly available link. But once I fix that, there we go. And um, now I've got a Doxify this version of this hedge doc file, just like you showed in your demo. Um, and I can do all the same things. I can go to show more appearance options and change the color. Let's let's make it, I don't know, we'll make it green, maybe a little darker green. And we'll pick uh, Helvetica, yeah. And we'll enable a sidebar. Um, and same deal. Um, so that's kind of front start to finish how you could set up your own Doxify this instance on Reclaim Hosting and configure it to look at a hedge doc uh, document. And it all worked. Woohoo! It did. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Uh, and again, I can I can edit this just like you were showing. Same thing here. I could go. What is the World Wide Web? There we go. It's it's all instant, which is just so cool. Um. So, uh, that is um, yeah. I I think you know one of one of my favorite tools are tools that you can kind of remix and repurpose just in general, I would say. And I think Doxify is such a cool example of that um, in sort of something that could only exist of the web because of the way like URL parameters work and how you know, you're, mm -hmm. you're grabbing stuff that lives on other servers in the case of the markdown files, you know, and um, well, in, in Doxify itself, I suppose in, in some ways that, um, so, I just I love the work you've done here to kind of try to make something simple that's also powerful if you want to go looking for that power. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's a really cool tool that more people need to to know about. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been great to, to share the tool with you uh, both today. And uh, yeah, I mean, I hope it provides another option. Again, you know, it's it's premised on the idea that you have people who would like to and work with Markdown. And if you like to and want to work with Markdown and it gets benefits for you to do that, then as you described, Doxify, this could be a way to start going into Markdown publishing and then see how far you can go um, uh, with that. So yeah, no, it's great. And again, awesome to see that demo and it worked. Uh, so, 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 so good. Even better. <laughs> Well, for more. <laughs> you know, I mean, I did, I'll, I, I did test it before we started recording, but, um, but, uh, Fair. but I've been, I've been using this already. So, I mean, since you've been, um, you know, making the changes to make HedgeDoc support work so simply, I've been kind of playing with it and, and messing around with it. And there's so many possibilities, you know, as you said, if what you're choosing to use is Markdown, there's so many things, you know, the hedge doc is a tool that, you know, obviously part of this flex course that we talked about, but like, I also like to take notes in obsidian. So it's like, okay, I could take my obsidian note and publish it over here and then pull it in the doc. 
it's just the possibilities are endless when you have a tool as flexible as something like this. So um, thanks so much for taking the time to share it with us. And uh, if folks have questions, they should check in in the Discord. So Yeah, this is great. Thanks so much, Paul. Well, thank you. No, it's been a pleasure for sure. Awesome. See ya. <laughs>